brought to you by the Habs Philosophy Society. David Hatter is a professor of philosophy of science at King's College London. He specialises in epistemology, philosophy of mind and philosophy of science. On the 12th of November, he talked to us about physicalism, the position that all things in the world are essentially physical. Here's a brief snippet of his talk. Professor David Hatton. Thank you, Ben, for those kind words, and thank you very much for inviting me here. Uh, I'm going to try and be quick so we have time for questions and discussion. So the advertised title was Are Human Beings Just Physical Machines? You've forgotten. Uh, uh, I think, but uh, I, we just put that down to make it kind of sound sexy. What, what I'm really going to be talking about is, is physicalism, also known as materialism, and in particular about the mind and the brain. So I'm going to present a very simple argument in favour of physicalism and materialism. I'm going to use them interchangeably. Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about the history of the argument, which will involve some history of science. And this is because this is a science society and not a philosophy society. Uh, first, the issue, uh, materialism versus, well, the alternative would be dualism. So the two positions I want to, to think about are the materialist view that everything is physical, including, and this is what we'd be interested in, uh, mental states, including conscious mental states, everything is physical. Uh, and the alternative view is that in addition to all the physical stuff, there's some extra stuff, uh, particularly in the uh, minds of intelligent beings. Just to get it clear, materialism, as I'm understanding it, is a very strong doctrine. It's not just the view that the brain controls the mind, that there's tight correlations between what's going on in the brain and the mind. It's the view that the mind is the brain. There's just one thing there. So think of examples from the history of science. We've discovered that, that heat is molecular motion. It's not that there's two things. Molecular motion kind of causes heat. It's heat is molecular motion. Or water is H2O. It's not that H2O causes something different. It's just that there's one thing there. We've got two names for it, two ways of thinking about it, but in reality there's just one thing. So the materialist view is that when we're talking about pains, we're just talking, using different terms, about certain activities in the brain. Uh, 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 C fibers firing, say. That's not a very good theory of pain, but let's just use that as an example. Uh, the materialist isn't denying that there are pains. I mean, of course there are pains, and it hurts to be in pain, and so on. But they're saying that what's going on when you're in pain is just that you've got C fibers firing. And what it's like for you when you have C fibers firing is that it's very nasty. But there's just one thing there. So, so that's the issue. The dualist view is that in addition to the brain processes, there's something else. Think of it like a, a wave or an aura, something, something additional to just the physical processes in the brain. You might think as a dualist that they're very tightly controlled by the brain, but in my terms, you're still a dualist if you think that there's something extra, even if tightly controlled by the brain. Okay, as I said, I want to give you a very simple argument in favour of materialism and then talk a bit about the history of this argument. So here's the argument. It has three premises. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Well, the first one is that mental states have physical effects. So think about, uh, uh, I'm thirsty, I feel thirst, and that causes me to go to the fridge and get a I want, I want to give you uh, an example of this, uh, that's a, a desire I have, a mental desire, and that causes me to raise my arm, that's a physical, a physical effect. So just think of cases where, where your conscious uh, uh, wishes, intentions, cause behaviour, uh, cause movements of your body. So mental states have physical effects. Second premise is that all physical effects are due to physical causes. So, whenever something physical occurs, then you can always find an explanation for why that happened within the realm of physics. So think about the example that came in 
in connection with premise one, uh, my arm race, is that a physical effect? Now think of that from the point of view of a physiologist studying why your arm went up. Well, because uh, the fibers in your muscles contracted. And why did that happen? Well, because electrochemical messages came down the nerves in your arm. And why did that happen? Well, because there was certain electrochemical activity in your motor cortex. And why did that happen? Well, because before that there were certain other physical things going on in your brain, and so on. And if you're a physiologist studying the movement of the arm, you'd expect to be able to trace back the causal history of that movement without le leaving the physical realm. You wouldn't expect to find uh, any, any gaps in the physical story as you went, went back through time. So that's premise two. All physical effects can be accounted for in terms of purely physical causes. So, what do we need to make of this? So now we've got the mental states have physical effects and those physical effects have physical causes. So should we think there's kind of two causes here, the mental causes and the physical causes? Sometimes we find cases like that. Philosophers call it a case of overdetermination. The classic philosophical example is, is somebody is, is shot and struck by lightning at the same moment. And so they're kind of killed twice over. Uh, there's two independent causes, each of which suffices for the result. I mean, if they hadn't been shot, they still would have died because of the lightning. If the lightning hadn't struck, they still would have died uh, because of the shooting. Uh, two, two different causes overdetermined the result. Is that what's going on in the mind-brain case? I mean, do we want to say that the physical processes in my brain and my mental state, my desire state, are two different causes that overdetermine the result? That looks wrong. I mean, we don't want to say, analogously to the, the shooting and lightning case, that if I hadn't wanted to raise my arm, it would still have gone up because uh, my motor cortex was doing certain things. Nor does it look like, we don't want to say that if my motor cortex uh, hadn't been doing those things, my arm still would have gone up because I wanted to raise it. It doesn't look like we have two different causes, each of which is enough for the effect on its own. So that's premise three. The physical effects of mental causes aren't always overdetermined by two separate causes, the mental causes. Okay, well, if you accept those three premises, I think it's very difficult to avoid materialism. Uh, and if you don't want to be a materialist, you should be thinking very hard now about which of these premises you want to, want to reject. Because, look, the first premise says that bits of behavior are have a mental cause. The second premise says that those bits of behavior have a physical cause. The third premise says those bits of behavior don't have two causes. So that leaves only one option. The mental cause and the physical cause are just the same thing. There's just one cause being thought about in two different ways. But when we think about water, H2O, we're talking about the same thing. The mental cause and the physical cause my desire and certain activities in my brain, they're the same thing. So, if you accept these three premises, then it seems to me you've got to accept the materialist conclusion. There's only one thing there, the mental state, also known as the physical state, and that's what causes the behavior. Hope you enjoyed this video. For information on future lecturers, visit our Facebook page.